So, I've touched upon romance in games, but what about when games make a mechanic out of making friends with NPCs? It's not quite the same thing. I can think of more than a few games, including Starstruck Vagabond actually, before anyone gets up my arse on this, that treat romance as merely the stage on the affection meter that comes after friendship. But that's doing a disservice to the wonderful tapestry of the human condition. Romance is when another person becomes the object of your focus. Friendship is when you and another person focus on the same thing together. A romantic partner gazes into your face, a friend stands by your side. That's the difference. In some ways a friendship can be better than a romance because a friendship is a much firmer foundation compared to the fraughtness of passion, and often it can be more comfortable and satisfying to an audience. When I rewatched Star Trek Deep Space Nine, I couldn't give half a triple squirt about Dr. Bashir getting his leg over Dax in the end, but I'm hugely invested in his multiple season long enemies to colleagues to best bros arc with Chief O'Brien. That's the wholesome relationship story. This has been on my mind because a lot of the games I've reviewed lately have centralised friendship with NPCs in either a mechanical or thematic way. Dungeons of Hinterburg with its very Persona-esque array of relationships that in some way buff your combat ability. Nine Souls with the little boy who lives in your house you can befriend in a possibly not entirely above board kind of way. Even Cryptmaster exhibits a trend I've also seen in games like High on Life in which the player is given a talkative, well-characterised NPC as a constant companion, who certainly feels like the closest thing we have to a friend by the game's conclusion. And it's particularly of interest to me because making friends with your crewmates was intended very early on as a core element of my game Starstruck Vagabond. So how exactly does one make an NPC feel like a friend? Or to give us a clearer goalpost, and without wishing to spoil anything, say you had plans to kill off a specific NPC as part of a harrowing emotional moment. How do you get to the point that their death might reduce a sensitive player to a blubbering mess? First and most obvious thing to do, make sure they stick around for a while. The human brain is very obliging in this respect because it automatically misses something that it's gotten used to. But then again, an itchy rash sticks around for a while, but you don't miss that when it's gone. I'm thinking of support characters from Zelda games, Navi from Ocarina of Time, or Fee from Skyward Sword. We're stuck with both of those for the whole game, but they never feel like a friend to Link, they feel like a nagging middle manager ordering him around. In contrast, the Cryptmaster in Cryptmaster is also a constant presence who does a lot of ordering around, but he also helps us out with puzzles, takes the piss out of us for typing in swear words, and generally has a rounded personality beyond nagging us to do things. So they have to be A, a reliable presence, and B, a reliable assistant in gameplay, not just someone who's all talk and expects us to do the work. That certainly seems to be Bioware's philosophy with Dragon Age and Mass Effect and all those other harem romance-based action RPGs. In such games, the friendable characters are also your battle party, and your camaraderie with them develops naturally as you work the core gameplay loop, in theory anyway. In practice, it does feel a little odd that you can fight shoulder to shoulder for an infinite number of hours, but your friendship never officially deepens until you go to them at the home base and press the contextual friendship button. This is one of the inherent difficulties of friendship as a quantifiable game mechanic, but more on that later. Thinking about it, being a helpful ally isn't a hard and fast necessity for NPC friendship, because the rather glaring counterpoint is Sheva from Resident Evil 5. Oh, she insisted on trying to be helpful, forcing me to manage her inventory for her as she kept using up my cool stuff, blowing an entire red health spray on me because I'd stubbed my toe on a pot plant. Ironically, I felt better disposed towards Ashley in Resident Evil 4, even though all she did was scream and get kidnapped a lot. But that was her job. The whole game was based around protecting her, so it's not necessarily an NPC being helpful that gets us attached to them, but that they do their fucking job. I mean, look at all the friends in Spiritfarer. None of them are particularly helpful, they just whine about needing food and hugs. But again, that's their job, and your job is to look after them, and that's why sending them to the door to the afterlife gave me the raging lip quivers. Well, not just because of that, which gets us to the next thing that turns an NPC into a friend. Character development. The Fable games always made a big thing of how it lets you make friends with and potentially marry any NPC, but that always fell flat as a mechanic because most of the NPCs were static cardboard cutout village set dressing. I assume Peter Molyneux, god bless him, intended us to come up with our own reasons for befriending specific NPCs, but that called for a larger degree of immersion than could be had in a game where you get people to like you by whistling at them for 30 straight minutes. So I want our NPC friend to have a character arc, either a story in which they undergo growth or a backstory that tells us more about them, and that we experience that story incrementally in chapters as our friendship score goes up. That model has worked pretty well over the years in Bioware RPGs, Persona games, Stardew Valley, etc, and I think our attachment to an NPC is all the stronger if at some point we changed our mind about them. Much as in the Bashir and O'Brien Deep Space Nine example, hatred to friendship is a lot more compelling than indifference to friendship. When I was writing my fourth book, Differently Morphous, I was having trouble establishing the main character, Alison, in her 
her opening scene in a classroom, she was basically a nondescript reactionary everyman sort of protagonist, and my test audience, that is to say wife, complained that she wasn't really gelling. So I gave it some thought, and next morning announced that I knew what to do. I had to make Alison hateable. Which kind of threw my wife, but after I rewrote the introductory scene with Alison as an infuriatingly smug teacher's pet type, I think it worked a lot better when the plot proceeded to shit all over her for the next 300 pages. In Spiritfarer, your relationship with your passengers often starts with them imposing themselves upon you and demanding your attention, and over time you come to know them and sympathise with the things they struggle with. And that's something I took influence from in Starstruck, with almost every crew recruitment story starting with them hijacking your ship or trying to eat you or antagonising you in some way, so you can feel how far the two of you have come by the time you're chums. The final pitfall friendship mechanics fall into is making the process of making friends feel too transactional. Which might be a tall order, because when you're dealing with a quantifiable affection stat, transactional is what it necessarily has to be. You do things that make the stat go up. But there are certainly things you can do to make it feel more natural. That's another thing Fable fucked up. I remember very clearly in Fable 3, after I'd whistled at a random peasant enough times, the dude said, OK, I will become your friend if you do a fetch quest for me. And I was like, piss off. Good hustle, Dr Pitchfork, but I'm not that desperate. I've also never been fond of the Harvest Moon Stardew Valley thing where you win the locals over by hurling presents at their face day in, day out. Starts to feel like I'm loading coins into a person-shaped vending machine so that we can press the button that makes sex come out. I shouldn't have to go out of my way to become friends with someone. For romance, sure. We've all had to sprint through an airport to make a confession of love to someone before they board a plane that will take them out of our life forever, but friendship is something that should occur spontaneously in the background when two like-minded people spend enough time together. So for Starstruck I devised the crew quest system in which each crew member requests that you perform specific tasks that most players will frequently do anyway. Clean the engine, take a new delivery job, repaint the ship next time you're on an industrial planet. All stuff you're engaging with on the core gameplay loop, doing the tasks makes the crew member's affection for you go up because it shows that you respect their input as a co-worker, but it doesn't take you out of your way. So there you have it, my take on the best way to implement NPC friendship mechanics in games. Let us know in the comments if you disagree. I mean, there are certainly other ways. Maybe you prefer the Mortal Kombat approach to friendship, which involves beating the snot out of someone for two minutes and then doing a button input that makes you dance around in front of a rainbow with a smaller version of yourself. If it were me, I don't think it would occur to me that the dude was trying to make friends with me, but who can say how any of us would be thinking after we've had seven kunais shoved through our head?